When I was a young slip of a thing, I used to wear, as you know, if you're a dinner partier, Jean too, sensual, but not too far from innocence. Come to find the beautiful fragrance of Jean too. Sensual, but not too far from innocence. And I also wore a perfume called Frangipani, which is was a natural oil, which is a crock, by the way, everybody. We're going to make something with a similar name. Pear Frangipan Tart. It's basically the most versatile pie and tart filling you will ever make in your life. It is an almond paste that puffs up souffles, essentially. And you've probably had it where it's like an almondy sort of puffy thing with pieces of fruit stuck in it. That's frangipan. And the great thing about it is you can make a lot of it and you can keep some of it in your fridge, which is what this is. And if you happen to have a tart shell lying around, you can just fill it with frangipan and bake it and it's a delicious almond tart. So you use almond flour. I use the sort of blanched one that's very white. And then I found this guy who I love this guy, the Red Mill guy. Um, and his, as you can see, is not, it, the skins are on there which is kind of an interesting thing for frangipan, that it's kind of flecked, you'll see. Um, you want a cup, of the, a cup of almond flour, looks like that, sort of, and an irritating tablespoon of flour, just do it. It kind of dries out the oils a little bit. You wanna mix, mix that together. Okay, and I'm gonna put this in the bowl of a food processor. I'm gonna put a half a cup of sugar in, a little bit of salt, and I'm just gonna Pulse that quickly to incorporate it. I'm just getting some almond extract. Please use real extracts. I'm gonna put a little bit of almond extract in. All right, so I'm gonna put the butter and pulse to incorporate. Now this is room temperature butter. Pulse, pulse to incorporate. Pulse, pulse, pulse to incorporate. Pulse, pulse, pulse to incorporate. Pulse, pulse, pulse to incorporate. Now we're gonna add two eggs and process until smooth. I wanna talk about Repair Shop. Watch Repair Shop, the quiet little show that is mending my broken heart. And J Blades, anytime, baby. Process until smooth. That looks a little bit thick to me, but it's okay. I'm now going to pick not this pear, <laughs> but this pear. <laughs> Don't pick a big soft pear. What was your first perfume? I know we've talked about this. What was your first perfume that you bought? Alfred Sung. Oh, really? That's a good drugstore perfume. Linny. My first perfume? Yes. Ah, uh, that baby stuff. Oh, baby, loves baby soft. Baby soft, yeah. yeah. Oh God, I remember that smell. For years I wore something called Fraca, which is a great perfume. It's a version of a very famous perfume called Jungle Gardenia, which a girlfriend of my dad's wore. That was some beautiful perfume. She also arrived at our house with her clothes packed in single layers, divided by layers of scented tissue paper. <clears throat> Cut out the, the seam and the uh, seeds. You can soak these in a little syrup with cinnamon or something to make it a little more holiday. But the whole thing is holiday in a way. This is my amazing pie crust that I made last night. The crust I used is the crust from Fresh Tomato Tarts, which is a very easy crust. It's very easy to handle. I'm now going to spoon in the frangipan, basically putting the frangipan in the tart shell. Very easy. And then Joy. Joy was sold in the 50s. They said the most costly perfume in the world. That's how they advertised it. It had uh, the most Bulgarian rose, which is why I could never wear it. Quite exquisite. One time I wore Joy. I stole my sister's Joy, but I had to go to the dentist. And <laughs> it's very difficult for me not to associate the smell of Joy with having my teeth drilled. Make sure you get all the way around. Nikki, what was your first aftershave? Oh, British Sterling. Oh, I know that. 
Boys should wear Santa. I don't know why American men don't know that. It's the sexiest thing in the world to get up next to a guy close, smell his perfume. Okay, here we go. It's lovely. I'm gonna put a teeny bit of sugar on top. Color me crazy. When you have a, 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 a tart pan with a removable, the moving bottom, you should always bake it on one of these. So when you take it out of the oven, you don't accidentally push the pie up. So this goes in, uh, it's about 30, 40 minutes. You, you can tell. It, it'll, it'll puff up, it'll look different. It'll be set to the touch and um, very delicious. Frangipan, Frangipan, does whatever the Frangipan can. Frangipan. Look at this. Look at this holy cow, amaze balls. Look at this holy cow, amaze balls. It's a tart. Holy cow, amaze balls. Let that cool. I'm absolutely thrilled with that. Friend Japan, man, man oh man. What is the origin of the word frangipan? It's related to a 16th century Italian nobleman called Muzio Frangipani, who was famous for making perfumed gloves. He became the toast of the town, you know. So when he left, the courts were tried to recreate the smell of his famous gloves, and they made frangipani tart, frangipan tart which apparently smells like his scented gloves, which is fabulous. If you go to the house of Guerlain in Paris, they have a collection of scented gloves there, and one wonders if there might be a pair of Mr. Frangipani's gloves there. Frangipan, Frangipan, does whatever the Frangipan can.